Mass Effect is returning with the original devs. The Callisto Protocol is more like Dead Space and Warzone have major changes in their upcoming season. Hello everybody and welcome to a new video of Gamer Correct. My name is Gavin Manis and you guys are watching Top Gaming News of this very week. Last week on the Game Awards, we got to see a new teaser for Mass Effect where we did see Lyara picking up the fragment of N7 armor. I'm sorry if I spelled the name wrong. <laughs> but it was already announced before that they were working on a new Mass Effect game on the N7 day. But after the show was over, Mass Effect project director Michael Gamble went on Twitter to confirm some really interesting things. Dusty Everman who brought Norm Mandy to life will be working on the game along with the Mass Effect trilogy cinematic director Parrish Lee. Brennan Holmes, who is a veteran for the Mass Effect trilogy and Derek Watts, the original director of Mass Effect trilogy, will also be a part of the new Mass Effect project. Woohoo! Looks like Michael just confirmed that the OG devs are coming back for Mass Effect. Now in this way at least some people will have some kind of hope that the new Mass Effect game will actually be better than Andromeda. Gamble also said that the game won't abandon Andromeda. Somebody asked on Twitter about the opening scene having shots of both galaxies and asked whether we will be having a sequel of both games where Gamble replied, you should wait and see. Very interesting indeed to see that Mass Effect Trilogy and Andromeda are getting some kind of sequel together in this next Mass Effect game. Right now we have no clue when the game is coming out. Maybe it could be late in 2021 where we might get some news or maybe next to next year of 2022 when we might get some more news or maybe the release of the game. But without a doubt, looking at these people who originally created or were a part of the original creation of Mass Effect Trilogy coming back for this new Mass Effect is definitely exciting. One of the biggest reveals of the Game Awards was this game right here, The Callisto Protocol, which is a new sci-fi survival game which looks very much similar to that of Dead Space. It's a long way to go because this game is coming out sometime in 2022. But it's not only the look of what makes it feel like Dead Space, but also the veterans who worked on the original Dead Space series are working on this very game. In one of the first shots of the trailer, an unnamed prison sits up in the bed. On his neck is a glowing implant which is green in color, which could indicate that he is currently healthy. If that's the case, then it's very much similar to Dead Space where the suit had an indicator on the back for health. Looks like there will be a lot of similar things taken from Dead Space. Steve Popotsis, who worked on Dead Space series, says that they want to focus more on horror and genuinely scare people, which again was also in Dead Space because Dead Space, it is a scary game. The game is going to be set in 2030 at prison colony called Black Iron on Jupiter's moon, Callisto. And that's all the info we have at this moment. What type of guns are we going to have is very much uncertain, but if we take a look at Dead Space, then it had some really really cool guns, but of course, you need to save up because scarcity of ammo. We have a long way to go of course and there will be news coming along in the next year and the year after that about this very game, but it's good to see that the veterans are coming back for this very game, similar to how Mass Effect has been working on uh, with the help of the OG devs, this one will also be worked upon with the OG devs of Dead Space. Pretty cool thing to see and because I'm a big fan of Dead Space, I would really, really love to see how this game plays and I'm excited, genuinely excited for this very game. What do you guys think of this very game? Do you think it brings back memories of Dead Space if you guys have played any of those? Let me know in the comments below. Another big reveal that came in the Game Awards was Back for Blood, which in a way is Left for Death 3. A gameplay was shown for the game where you see four people going through a crowd of zombies in a very similar fashion as that of Left for Dead. Hell, they start from the same room as Left for Dead. Now there are some interesting monsters which is shown in the trailer. One of them was this four-armed Spider-Man thing which spat a spider web on one character which made him stand in one location or actually got stuck in one location for some time until another member came by and rescued him. That's a really cool monster to add who somehow is bit by a spider and became Spider-Man thing. Chris Ashton from Turtle Rock said that this is going to be bigger than that of Left 4 Dead with more missions, more characters and more story and more monsters. Now in Left 4 Dead we had 4 characters but we had different types of 4 characters. I think there were 2 uh, groups of 4 characters. I think in this game we will have more groups of 4 characters that we can select. And of course talking about new monsters, they added a 20 foot tall monster. This is now an attack on titan game with zombies. The game is set in a world where these once humans who were host to a parasite have evolved into terrifying creatures bent to take over the rest of humankind and you are some of the guys who take the fight and eradicate the Ridden who you guys are going against. 
The game is similar, but of course there will be some new changes such as aim down sights, which wasn't there in the previous Left 4 Dead games, and many more that we will soon get to know about. The game looks a lot polished than our beloved Left 4 Dead, but these monsters, these monsters are a new and cool addition to have. But I have to say, whoever was playing in the gameplay demo had horrible aim. I mean, he might be playing in a controller, but Jesus Christ, it was bad. <laughs> The game is coming out on July 2021, but you can right now register in backforblood.com where you can get possibly an alpha code for the game where you can play the game on 17th of December. That's what they said. But I'm very much excited to play this game when it comes out. The Game Awards did show many interesting game reveals such as Perfect Dark which was a game built way long ago for Nintendo 64 but now it's coming back developed by a new studio of The Interactive, a Santa Monica game studio. It is described as an eco sci-fi game and a first person shooter that isn't just about shooting. It's set in a futuristic world where corporations have developed new technology to combat ecological disasters. You will play as a female protagonist same as the old game. So expect some cool gadgets, sliding and jumping and all that action. The game is early in development so nothing else was revealed when the game is coming out. Dragon Age 4 was also revealed with a new trailer which talks about facing demons, dragons and dark spawns and then we are left with a shot of Solas from Dragon Age Inquisition. According to a blog post by Bioware, you will form relationships with companions who fight by your side when you experience this true Dragon Age saga set in Thedas, a world in need of a new hero. There is no release date and it's also just named Dragon Age so I don't know if there's gonna be a 4 added to that after that as you move along or it's just gonna be the name of the game. Arc 2 was also announced with Vin Diesel in it. Why do you always have to grunt Vin Diesel? Why? The sequel to the very successful and a game of 150 GB size is now getting a sequel. We saw Vin Diesel doing, well, Vin Diesel things fighting a T-Rex. Not surprised by that but it was mostly cinematic and no true gameplay. No release date yet again for this game as well so we have to wait and see what's gonna happen. Surprising enough, an Evil Dead game was also announced. The first game was made back in 2005 and now this one looks like another co-op survival game which we have seen before. Well games like Left 4 Dead, World War Z, Back 4 Blood, I don't know why this game exists anymore. But the press release of this game says something interesting. Work together as a team of 4 survivors exploring, looting, crafting, managing your fear and finding key artifacts to seal the breach between worlds. Or take control of the powerful Kandarian demon to hunt Ash and his friends while possessing Detites, the environment and even the survivor themselves as you seek to swallow their souls. Battle across memorable locations including the infamous cabin and the woods brought to life with tons of terrifying visuals and all new dialogue from Bruce Campbell. Discover more than 25 weapons including Ash's gauntlet, boomstick and chainsaw and advance in a variety of skill trees to grow stronger and survive in this fun co-op and PvP experience. Happy to see that Bruce Campbell will be voice acting in this very game but we will have to wait because this game is coming out sometime in 2021. Crimson Desert was another game that was shown which looks very similar to Black Desert Online. It will feature a single server, massive open world that players share and players can take over the role of Macduff, a downtrodden mercenary fighting to reclaim his land instead of making your own character. The combat is nearly identical to Black Desert Online but it's also improved and there is more emphasis on a scale duels and you can also grapple enemies and kick them or do some wrestling moves which is very interesting to add. There's going to be a lot of dragon action and a lot of punching and kicking and doing wrestling moves. The game will be coming out by the end of 2021 so there's of course a lot more news that they will be sharing in the next year. Which games are you excited about? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. On December 16th, Call of Duty will be making a history as it will combine two different games together, that being Cold War and Warzone. It was announced earlier that uh, all progression from Warzone will be shifting to Cold War without any issues. With that, Warzone will also be getting a lot of new weapons added to the game. Activision gave a sneak peek of Warzone and Cold War integration in their blog post and it looks like Warzone's old ranking system is gone and replaced by Cold War's system. Now this doesn't mean that you will lose your progression, the existing loadout, your existing loadout from Warzone will stay put, will not change at all but the only thing that will change is the way ranks are being progressed. Now this makes sense because you're moving from one game to another game so that's why they're adding whatever Cold War has into Warzone and removing what Warzone had that was the setting of Modern Warfare. As I said there are many more weapons coming to the game and one of them is AK-47, a gun that is already there in Warzone. Great. 
It looks like many guns will be replaced by the Cold War guns. For example, MP5 and M4 are still there in Warzone, but they will still be replaced by the Cold War weapons because the guns in Cold War are different than that of Warzone. So it could be possible that they will handle differently, they will sound differently. Not so sure about if that's gonna happen, but it looks like that's where they're heading to. Not only that, Warzone is also changing the look of the menu. So on the tabs on the top, it will be white in color, which is what Cold War has on its tabs, which to be honest, doesn't look that good for Warzone. It looked good for Cold War, not for Warzone. I would like to have color instead of black and white. Are you guys excited for Black Ops Cold War Season 1 with Warzone having a new map and new free multiplayer maps along with many more new weapons? Everything is for free and it's coming on 16 December, that is this Wednesday. So be ready to kick in with Cold War. With the Game Awards, there were a lot of rumors that Wolf Among Us 2 will be shown but unfortunately, it wasn't. And before the show even started, Telltale Games tweeted out that they will be talking about the game when the time is right. They said that they are working on the full season at once instead of pushing out one episode at a time, which is actually a very good thing to do. As of right now, the pre-production of the game has started. They even mentioned that they were able to bring some games back but not all games can be brought back. Hopefully sometime in 2021, we will get to see when the game is coming out and it's really good to see that they are working on the game at a complete full season instead of pushing it out episode wise every uh, couple of months. I'm very much excited for Wolf Among Us 2 and I cannot wait for that game to come out. And speaking of delays, it looks like Prince of Persia Remastered has been delayed. Originally scheduled to release in January 20 next year, but it will now release on March 18th instead. They say that with the circumstances that they are in, they need more time to complete the game and to be honest, it's perfectly fine. The game is already receiving a lot of backlash with how the game looks, how the characters play and visually it's just receiving a lot of backlash. So I hope that these are more days that they're getting, I hope they can fix those things and I believe that they can because it's one of those projects which has been given to Ubisoft Pune. So I'm excited to see what they can work upon and I'm excited to play Prince of Persia once again. Well, there you go. That is all we had to talk about in this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, leave a like as well and comment down below about any of the news we just discussed. And do not forget to subscribe to Gamer Connect for more awesome videos just like this and many much more coming up very, very soon. My name is Good Madison. I'll see you guys later because right now I'm going to go and play some Cyberpunk.